After the multi-year wait, I was finally able to ride Iron Gwazi, a coaster that's been on my bucket list for a couple of years now. At first, I was skeptical that it was overhyped. Now, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind this coaster is among the greats. This video is going to be my full review of Iron Gwazi. Let's get into it. Iron Gwazi is located at Busch Gardens, Tampa. It is the RMC conversion of the once dueling Gwazi coaster residing in the front of the park. Mainly, the station area and queue were reused. Other than that, the layout and theme are completely different. Gwazi used to be themed to a mythical tiger-lion combo. The new theme is to crocodiles. The queue has some informational signs about them, and the foliage around the queue is immaculate. But the train is the true beauty of the theme. I absolutely love the design of the crocodile. The color choices are also amazing. The brown wooden supports with the bright purple track. Iron Gwazi has its own little plaza to the left of the entrance plaza. To get to the actual coaster entrance, you pass under the ride sign and there is a split for lockers and the line. It's really convenient for those that need a locker. It's right there. I was able to ride the coaster multiple times even though the line looked fairly long. From my experiences, if you join the line at the beginning of the outside section of the queue, the wait is around an hour. Personally, I would wait that every time for this beast. Getting into the massive station that houses a good chunk of the queue, you can eventually board one of the RMC trains. I've already said how I'm in love with these trains. The front car design is perfect. They seat two people per row in 12 rows for a total of 24 riders a train. Grozzy runs two trains, which for a fast and fairly short ride, works. On my visit, I thought operations were not very good, but the concept they were working could be very efficient. They had everyone sit and buckle their seatbelts, then the ride ops closed the lap bar for you. They weren't necessarily fast at this. I think the problem was that they checked seatbelts in one round, then closed the restraints in a second round. The concept is there though. Some other coaster crews like Fury 325 run a similar system, and they pump trains out like crazy. Anyways, getting into the layout of Iron Gwazi, it starts with a left turn out of the station, then a small dip under the queue into the lift hill. My first ride was in the back row, and right away I knew this was going to be a gnarly experience. You then climb the 206 foot tall lift hill, the tallest in North America. The drop is also the steepest at 91 degrees. I prefer this in the back row. The drop seems to last longer as you descend 206 feet to the ground, hitting your max speed of 76 miles per hour. The first element is an overbank that turns into an outer bank. It's solid for the entire train with a little bit of air time. You then ascend up a small turnaround into one of the star elements on the coaster, the barrel roll down drop. This element in particular is very different in the front and back to me. The front row is a lot slower and you really feel the inversion, maybe even getting a little bit of hang time. And if you like that feeling, definitely sit up in the front. In the back you fly through it and are pinned to the side of the car, two very different experiences. Next is another overbank but a little closer to the ground and a little faster. Then is the second star of the attraction, the sideways airtime hill crossing over the station. I think it's pretty much the same across the train, but it gives some good forces. But honestly, I think after this element is where the ride switches gears. Gwazi becomes low to the ground, faster, and more out of control. So you first enter into a twisting airtime pop and then a wave turn. Neither give insane airtime, but it's there. The wave goes straight into a stall, Similar to the barrel roll, this is another element that differs based on your seat. To me, it's probably one of the only places the front of the train will triumph the back. In the front, you can actually feel the hang time. In the back, you just kind of cruise through it. Coming out of the stall, you fall back to the ground and slightly turn to the right. Then you ride into basically a twisting triple up. The first hill twists and turns to the right at the top, which rises higher into a second hill. Then there's a third mini hump before the train finally dies back down making a 180 degree turn. This leads into another airtime hill. All the airtime is generally the same. Nothing insane, but solid. The best moment of airtime though is probably the last hill. Finally, the track banks and turns to the right and into the brake run. For a coaster of this height, Iron Gwazi feels surprisingly short. You cover over 4,000 feet of track in one minute 50 seconds. But I think it's really enjoyable. You really feel the speed throughout the whole layout and are flying into the brakes at the end. My favorite seat is definitely in the back, and overall, the ride feels more out of control back there. Now, normally I would compare this coaster to its predecessor, but I never rode this monstrous dueling coaster, so it would not be right to do. All I have to say about it is thank god we have this masterpiece. I've heard people say this coaster is overhyped, 
and as some people say it's not praised enough. I'm definitely on the more praised side for sure. So much to the fact that I call this coaster my new number one. What? I'm sure some of you guys have some surprise to this, so I'll explain. First off, I want to say I've been to Cedar Point and ridden Steel Vengeance. This may make it even crazier. I do indeed put Iron Gwazi above the world class coaster, but honestly, it was never my number one. I've always loved Maverick at Cedar Point more. Even through the opening of Steel Vengeance, Maverick remained the top for me. So that was the actual coaster to beat. I loved it for its out of control feeling and rapid fire pace. And I think Iron Gwazi is a very similar in that aspect, especially the ending. But putting layouts and ride experiences aside, I think there is a factor to number ones that a lot of people have, bias. Maverick shattered my idea of what a roller coaster could be. Also, waiting over three hours for it my first time made the experience so much more memorable. I didn't have this type of experience with Steel Vengeance. Fast forward to Iron Gwazi, I was ready to ride pre-COVID. So I basically ended up waiting three years staring at the closed coaster. When the time finally came, it had been my goal for years to get on this coaster. I had already manifested the greatness of it, and I went in with some skepticism that it was overhyped and still came out impressed. Actually, speechless is a better word. I don't want this story to discredit this legendary coaster. Everything great about the layout is true, with maybe a little more than you thought. But the personal experience is what throws a coaster over the top to number one. Bias can also affect views on other coasters. Your first major coaster may be regarded as trash to the community, but holds a special place in your heart. Or a home park coaster may triumph others just for that reason. It's your home park. So I think there's a lot of different situations to replacing a number one. Mine happens to be the personal experience combined with the outstanding coaster that Iron Gwazi is. And moving back to the coaster for a wrap up, Iron Gwazi is the new king of Bush Gardens. There is no question there. For that and everything else I've said, it's obvious that I give this coaster a 10 out of 10. I don't think there's any change I would make to this coaster to make it any better. You could say add length, but then you risk slowing down the ending. So I will leave it how it is, a masterpiece. And that's gonna do it for my review of Iron Gwazi at Bush Gardens Tampa. What do you think of this coaster? I would love to know in the comments below. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.